Well, that's the thing with TikTok as well. It's very easy for it to like, like blow up. I was honestly surprised that it happened. But once you understand the algorithm and you understand the formula of how it works, it's, it kind of just kind of becomes ingrained with you. In March 2022, Michael started posting daily videos on TikTok under the name Hot Fashion Takes. With no surprise, hot takes on mostly men's fashion. The videos show his passion for niche fashion designers like Walter van Beirendonk or Kiko Kostadinov and spotlight upcoming designers he likes. Michael also makes videos where he specifically analyzes menswear elements like textures and silhouettes while the next video will be critiquing high-end and the mainstream fashion industry. Fashion is such an integral part of identity and culture that the videos also branch out into many parts of this art form and industries, like this one. Basquiat had his own clothing line that he ran in the 70s as a teenager called Man Made. You can tell the clothes were very DIY and thrifted, but also the starting point for the art he later became famous for. These clothes wound up being Basquiat's first showcase as he managed to put it on display at a small high-end boutique in East Village, New York, and also the first appearance of his signature crown. I wonder how he would have done on Streetwear Startup. Follow for more. When Michael seems to have a specific interest, you see multiple videos in a row about this part of fashion. At some point, Michael posted five back-to-back -back videos about shoes. In between these short-form TikTok essays, Michael sometimes shares DIY methods and uses successful genres, such as the tier list and iceberg format. About a year ago, Michael started the next chapter on YouTube under the name Fashion Love of Four. Here, he posts longer video essays than snappy TikToks, diving deeper into a specific topic, but maintaining his comedic and playful style. On YouTube, his videos are also about designers he likes and knows a lot about, but also go into more systemic issues within the fashion industry. These videos are thoroughly researched, as for the video How Bernard Arnault Ruined Fashion. Aesthetically, Michael maintains a role style in both his TikToks and YouTube videos. He often sits in his room or in front of a green screen with a fashion show playing in the background and him in the lower right corner. This gives a Twitch stream effect, a platform that is known for live streams in this style. In combination with the high paced speech and density of information, Michael's videos on both YouTube and TikTok are very direct and effective. Please welcome Michael, fashion lover. <laughs> so, um... We'll divide the interview in actually two parts because you also uh, work on two different platforms and we'll bring it together at the end. Um, so let's first start with TikTok and therefore uh, you have your phone with you. Um, so what we'll do, we'll go through some examples. Uh, but first of all, I would like to ask you, uh, how did you start uh, your online career and why was it on TikTok at first? I've never been like a huge fan of social media, but at the same time, I felt a need to, I guess, express myself and also connect with people who were into what I was into, which I never, I didn't find to a great extent around me in my personal life. So that's what inevitably led me to making TikToks. It was the most accessible platform. It was the easiest one to get started with. And you could like, you didn't have to commit a lot, but you could produce a lot of content and see what worked. It let you, it let you experiment and yeah, it let me do what, yeah. I, what happened, I guess. And was it, uh, were you consuming a lot already on it? Kind of. I, I honestly started to consume a lot to do like, research because I wanted to learn how to do it. And like, when I get into something, I want to do it well. So when I wanted to do it, even though I wanted to express myself, I also wanted to, it to get seen. So by yeah. like, doing my research before and seeing what worked for other people, I was able to apply that to my own videos. So I didn't just go into it not knowing anything, experimenting. I yeah. went around, I got familiar with the whole fashion TikTok landscape, and I tried to find what I thought I didn't see, basically. Yeah. I was trying to fit something that I wanted to see. Yeah. 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 And did you also start off with the idea, like, it's going to be menswear mostly? or I guess that's because what I'm mostly interested in and what I know a lot. And I also thought there was a big um, gap there because I actually am, like, a, I, I like both women's wear and men's wear, and I do talk about that a lot. But I found that there was a plethora of women's wear content out there. Men's wear content, not that diverse, which is yeah. why I started to do it. I wanted to, that's why I started out my name as Hot Fashion Takes. It was yeah. mostly meant to be hot takes about menswear that people don't really talk about a lot. Yeah. I don't know. In an approachable way as well. Not alienating an audience because, you know, fashion can be seen as this maybe feminine thing, especially yeah. coming from a menswear perspective. I wanted to have like a, a balanced thing for, for both sides to enjoy. Yeah. I see. I see. And, and then um, maybe it's, it's good to sort of uh, have an example of one of your TikToks sure. and then go through it uh, from the start. Which one would you want uh, to What's the goal of men's fashion? Oh, yes. Oh yeah, opnemen. I have to record this. 
What is the goal with men's fashion? Why make more clothes when there's so many already out there accomplishing different things? I heard this from somewhere, so let me know if you recognize it. But the goal in women's fashion is to step as far outside the box as possible, while the goal in men's fashion is to make the box a little bigger. If you look at the women's Met outfits compared to the men's, you can see the range of clothing that the men lack. You can look at the amount of different necklines women can choose from in a top, while men have like four. Now obviously people deviate, there are exceptions and nuance, but I think this is generally the way it is. I think it's a lot harder for someone to push a small boundary like introducing a new neckline in a collection and have it stick than it is for someone to create a meaningful artistic collection that most people won't wear. This is where actual design is needed to make these changes and have them done well. I think it was brave of Jerry to try out these lapelis blazers, but they're just not done well. I love artistic fashion, but altering classic silhouettes in a meaningful way can serve a greater purpose. Let me know what you think. Follow for more. Yeah, so this is this is um, one of the... Well, there, there are many directions that you go to in your channel, mm -hmm. so this was one one example. Um, so how do you how do you come about, like, where does the idea come from to make this... A video and do you write down those ideas somewhere or yeah so i guess i am inspired a lot by other creators in a way and what works for other people can also work for me and i just try to put my twist on it in terms of my style of editing and also my opinion i guess i try not to be tr too provocative for the sake of being provocative but i do search for those provocative opinions to get a reaction and to get people talking i think that's very important yeah. in social media when it comes to writing down ideas i have like Thoughts. Ideas. This <laughs> is specifically for uh, like TikTok ideas that I did before. So I made all my videos on a Premiere Pro. So like on my on my laptop, I decided not to do it through TikTok just because I found that easier. But I would still like when I have a thought throughout the day, I would just write it down quickly and I would go back to this. Some of them are just very simple thoughts and ideas. Some of them I think it's just replica clothes. That's the whole idea, and I would just remember from looking yeah. at that. That's as far as it went when it comes to notes. Yeah. On my phone. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. but then then you have those ideas, and you're saying like, I I don't oh software update, <laughs> cancel, remind me later. Yeah. Um, I'll set an uh, where was I? I'll set an alarm for you. Sorry. Yeah. yeah thanks. <laughs> um, where was I? Uh, uh, with the ideas on my. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then uh, you you mentioned that you're you you're not using uh, TikTok to make the, the yeah because i started out doing it and it just uh, it seemed so flimsy especially when you're trying to like cut it and be particular i could do it like i tried using CapCut on my phone which is another video editing software and in the end i found it so much more efficient to just do it on premiere pro on my laptop because yeah you could just get the files from the internet it's just way easier to do it on a big screen with a mouse than on your on your phone yeah. and my videos are not visual with me i wanted to make them snappy and quick and easy to watch and like aesthetically pleasing as well all that can be done with images I found online and done on my computer, then exported to my phone. Ah, I see. So that yeah. means that you also research on your computer. Yeah, so. well, yeah, I would do everything on there. And it just so happens TikTok's on, the, on your phone. So that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you export it to your phone. That's exactly, the only thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and do you, when you, did you already know the software? Yeah, I had I had uh, experience in the past. At one point, I think I wanted to be a, a Minecraft YouTuber, and I then I see. wanted to be like a another <laughs> like an Overwatch YouTuber, maybe. Uh -huh. So I've been like I've dabbled, you know, I've dabbled in the yeah. past. But I quickly just learned everything I need to learn from like YouTube tutorials. You can learn whatever you want online, like yeah. super easy. It's really handy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. And and then and then okay. So then we have the ideas and the, the way that you make your videos. And then there's also the part where you execute them. So you you start doing maybe research, or is it in in, in some cases also just from the top of your head? It or? depends on the video. Like uh, the one about the goal of men's fashion that you just played, that's just my opinion. So there's not much. I guess the research is like all the consuming I've done of previous content in the past, like yeah. has, which has led me to the point of forming that opinion. That's where that comes from. The one on Basquiat that you showed in the intro video, that's a time where I'm like, I don't actually have anything to say, like an mm. opinion of mine, but I want to make a video. So I just learn something for the sake of learning that I find interesting, obviously. Yeah. And then that becomes a video. So that's how the research comes into it. And obviously, if I'm quoting, if I have an opinion and I want to back it up, yeah. I will research it, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, I, I want, I'm always trying to make sure that if I do have like some sort of statistic-based opinion, I want to make sure it's backed up by something, not always just like yeah. empirically yeah. based, I guess. So, so then, then how do you decide to post it? Is, is it also sometimes that you're in the middle of the process of making and then decide not to do it? Or? With TikTok, it's like you don't have to commit or like you can post a video and it doesn't take that much effort and it's just, it goes out there and it flops, it flops, it doesn't do well, you know, and you can just move on. With YouTube, that takes a lot more time deciding on what I actually want to do. That yeah. uh, You need to put a lot of thought into that. Yeah. For TikTok, I found that it was nice in the sense that I could try everything and I had no like, you know, guilt about it not doing well or like feeling like I'm wasting my time because yeah. there's always a learning experience there. And uh, I guess it is on YouTube as well, but it does yeah. take a lot more time. Yeah, and so by amazing. making, you just learn also. How exactly, to do yeah, yeah. And that's why I think TikTok is the best way to start 
because if you want to end up branching out to YouTube or doing anything like that, starting on TikTok lets you, you know, mess up and be stupid and get yeah. used to just, you know, being a bit cringy, talking to a camera, you know, seeing your face, all the stuff. TikTok's really easy to, to start And how, with. how much do you think that has to do with the algorithm? Do you see that or do you notice something compared to, for example, YouTube uh -huh. on how your uh, content is being consumed or that it spreads easily? Well, that's the thing with TikTok as well. It's very easy for it to like, like blow up. I was honestly surprised that it happened. But once you understand the algorithm and you understand the formula of how it works, it's, it kind of just kind of becomes ingrained with you. Yeah. And um, for, for TikTok, it's, 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 I have like mixed feelings about that, it's particularly on YouTube, which I'll, I'll talk about later when we get to YouTube. But I think you, you come to know what works and what doesn't yeah. just from raw experience. And you get data, everything is shown to you, so you know exactly how yeah. things performed. And you can go very deep looking into it. I think the hardest part is just finding something that does work and then extrapolating from there. You know, yeah. That's the hardest point at the start. Yeah. But especially if you look around and mimic what other people are doing, it's not that hard to get started, in my opinion. Maybe I was just lucky, though. I don't know. Yeah, well, th that's 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 what's so fascinating because your first video is is to me it's quite niche. It's like mm -hmm. it's about a silhouette, about a certain type of where can you show it? Maybe because it was in the introduction, but oh yeah, the the, key, the the first Kiko video I did on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on this. yeah it's up near the very top actually. It's still as well today. Is there a name for clothes like this? It's sort of like tech wear, but it's not for functionality, it's for aesthetic. You're adding extra pieces and accessories and altering the pattern purely to get an interesting or different shape and silhouette. It can occasionally be functional, but I like it when the aesthetics are prioritized, which tech wear doesn't really do. Kiko Kostadinov is very good at this. It was like the editing, like the editing was important, but it was very uh, algorithm based, right? Yeah. So I would use like very popular images that you see on Pinterest. Pinterest is a, it's not a good uh, platform for like inspiration for creating like stuff you want to create. Yeah, you made a whole video. I made a whole video about yeah. it. But when it came to like making videos that you want to be caught, that you want to like catch on the algorithm, it's great for that because you need yeah. stuff that is trendy and you know that works. Pinterest is great for that, especially yeah. if you curate your Pinterest feed to show you things that you know does well. You have yeah. to, yeah, by doing that, you're, you know it works. And like picking the images are important, but then... Is there a video in there that you, that you, that you know of that, or that you remember that has those? Was it, for example, in the, in the video that we showed? Uh, but the, when I was talking about Pinterest. The, the, Im, the images that you, you knew that they would work because they were Ooh. popular in, on Pinterest. I think a lot of even just the thumbnails you see right here, the ones yeah. I pick are the ones that I get. These are the most popular thumbnails, like the ones that I think will do the best. Like the thumbnail goes into it as well. If you're just looking here, like yeah. here, this is Ding Yong Zhang. If you look at this, he, the, he, this guy is all over Pinterest, and that's why I used him particularly as the thumbnail. And why he's the first thing you see. So people might even recognize the image, and because it's associated with this like cool niche fashion aesthetic, that yeah. also also hooks people in to watch the rest of the video. Yeah. And like there is definitely a place for every niche thing, especially on TikTok. Like that's why it works. Yeah. I think you can be very so, niche, but it works still. Ah, uh, yeah. So then, then you could, in a way, you could say that the the you use one other platform as a ranking tool sure, or as yeah, an yeah, algorithm yeah. that sort of picks for you what's... Especially for fashion, it's very yeah. visual. It's already, there's already like a whole database of what works on Pinterest, which is all like, a lot of people use Pinterest for fashion. So it makes yeah. sense that if you, that it also will translate to you TikTok. You just migrated you know? in a way. Exactly, just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see, I see. Yeah, and then, and then um, yeah, also uh, many of your popular videos are also connected to popular formats. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering like... Uh, uh, maybe you should, we should just watch one, the, the Margiela tier list. Margiela tier list. Uh, that was really popular. Right here, yeah. Let's do a Margiela tabby tier list because there are a lot of variations. First, I'm just going to group all sneaker tabbies together and put them in D. I really can't get behind them because of the round toe box. And I think the slit is such a striking feature that it shouldn't be put with busy shoes like sneakers. The tabby loafer, I don't like how wide and square it gets to accommodate the slit. I generally prefer penny loafers as well, but I see how that wouldn't really be possible for tabbies. Flat tabby boots look weird and like boxing shoes, which I don't like. They could have given it a thicker sole. I'm not a fan. Low and high heel tabby boots are one of my dream boots. I won't even say anything about them. I take either, honestly. Let's also throw knee high tabbies in there too. Painted tabby boots are even more elite. Let's be real, they transcend. S. Tabby gloves and mittens. I like to stretch my fingers, but they are kind of cool. Tabby insta pumps. What? Why? Follow for part two, maybe. Well, you did a part two. I did do part two. Yeah. Yeah. Did you enjoy making these videos? These are really fun. Yeah, because it's just like just like uh, it's fun for me. No research is no research is involved. It's fun to make. I think it's fun for everyone to make a tier list, even just like in your spare time, people do it. Yeah. So the fact that I can do it and also be controversial, that's also why they're really good because everyone has such mixed opinions, you know. And is it then also pop is it that popular also because it is so easy to make? Like it's That's low true. effort, high. And it's familiar to everybody. No one needs to be yeah. explained what a tier list is anymore because yeah. it's it's seen all over I see, social I see. media. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. 
And then the iceberg video is another one. That is yeah, this is another uh, popular because format. I really I, I just I, th this is maybe my favorite format. Yeah, because it's it it shows it's like color colorfully it's also yeah. quite nice it's already. Aesthetically but pleasing. then sort of like you can really uh, you pause it. Yeah, and you, then you can watch it. So I was also wondering like is that also intentionally that it goes a little too fast so you can't read it. Yes, that is. Uh, yeah, you have to think about everything. Of course, everything yeah. is planned. It's not. It's not random. So I do like. I, I also want to fit it in a short enough time frame where like it's not like too long. But also, I do think. Yeah, you have. To, you do take down the fact that people will be pausing and watching again and looping again, which yeah. just makes it like spread yeah. even further. Do you want to watch it? Yes, let's do it. This is the fashion iceberg. Rather than being a scale of obscurity on fashion, it's a scale of how much effort and dedication is required to learn about and acquire brands the further down you go. Tier one is pretty much everybody who wears clothes, so good job, go you. Tier two is anyone who wears clothes that they think are cool and makes Instagram posts of them wearing said cool clothes. Tier three is pretty much tier two, but you have more money. Kind of sad to see McQueen here, but I guess this sneaker is more known than the man himself. As you see, the character is beginning to change. Tier four is very diverse. This is someone who I'd say is really into fashion and has discovered the entire range of what fashion has to offer, but it only goes deeper. Tier 5, to be honest, this is just an expansion of Tier 4. The only brands here that wouldn't belong in Tier 4 are maybe Demir Doma and Julius. Tier 6 is a pretty decent tier, and I think the edge before Tier 7. You have now gone too deep and lost your human form. If you own and know about these brands, you probably love fashion as an art form, or you've gotten lost in the abyss. Tier 8, Raph Simmons early 2000s and Issey Miyake is not that niche to be honest, and the rest on here is very Japanese centric. And I agree, it takes real effort to learn about and purchase them. Good luck remembering 20471120 next time you want to tell someone about it. I just call it the Japanese brand with the numbers. Finally, tier 9. I don't think it's hard to know about this stuff, but more than likely you will never see or own any in your lifetime. Except Final Home. You can get that on Grailed. Which tier are you? Follow for more. Yeah, it's also very like interactive as in like, uh, you can relate to it because you you stop yeah. and see like, oh, which one do I know, you know? So Yeah, and it sparks, really sparks debate. Exactly. Which is also yeah. engaging and also works That's for the true, yeah, and yeah. 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 And then, um, uh, there's another tier list yeah. I would like to watch. Because it's also, it's the latest, isn't it? That you oh, made? the one where I was being because, ex experimental with my Yeah, content, yeah, right? because I think the, the, uh, to, to me, at least, like uh, the success is also partly of, of sort of like uh, your videos. On It's also, there's a comedic or even satire part in it, usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think this one is, yeah, you haven't been as active as in the beginning. But I think this is like an addition that is also quite <laughs> sort of like out of the blue. It was suddenly there. So let's just watch it because it's nice. It's fun. Nut tier list. We got five nuts ranging from all these little boys and dark chocolate as a palate cleanser. Starting off with a hazelnut. It's so nothing. What a mediocre nut. Doesn't really go wrong, but doesn't do anything right. Let's see. Uncircumcised almond. Now that's a nut right there. That has some flavor to it but maybe too much that's why we don't mix it with chocolate like hazelnuts i forgot my palate cleanser circumcised almond to see if there's a difference i i think i like that one more i'm not a big fan of skin on my fruits my nuts and uh, i'm sure you can assume on what else got one of my least favorites coming up here or at least historically haven't had a walnut in a long time let's see how it goes interesting not as harsh as it used to taste it used to be kind of bitter B tier, B tier. Oh yeah, circumcised almond S, uncircumcised A. Let me hydrate, we got a big nut coming up. A big chunky Brazil nut. Very nice crunch. It broke into a lot of fine particles. Very mild, but pleasant. That one was circumcised actually, and I think that's gonna put it into A. Thanks. Well, now, now we're watching this one. <laughs> <laughs> I was also, in the meantime, wondering like, how is it now to have live audience respond to videos? Because otherwise, you would just it's weird. get it's a weird. like. It's, it's nice to know that someone's laughing. You know? it's <laughs> nice to, yeah, <coughs> thank you. Okay. You don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's time um, to move to the to the the other platform, oh. which in this case is also a physical act. So bear with us, uh -huh. um, because we have to uh, unplug and Wait, unplug unplugged. again. Yeah, there it is. Nice. Ah, about the background. <laughs> Don't judge me too hard for Wasn't that. that. Wasn't that for your Overwatch? This is when era? I was a Minecraft. Yeah, Minecraft era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. I, see. I haven't changed it since. Yeah, no, that's cool. I like it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, now we're on the desktop of, of your own uh, your own machine. Yes. Um, and you got rid of some stuff because you need to make some space. Sure. Uh, yeah, but yeah. luckily, there's still also uh, enough to talk about yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. in here. Um, so yeah, let's um, let's move on because. About a year ago, is it? 
that you started off with YouTube? Yeah, in like June of uh, last year. How, so, how yeah. and why did you? Ooh. Well, I think I got kind of tired of TikTok as like, um, it's a good place to start, but it's not the best to like, depending on your sort of content, of course, but I found that it wasn't the best for me to grow and actually like grow as a person in my opinions about fashion. It's hard to talk about something for only a minute and really go deep into yeah. it. So I really felt kind of restricted by that format. And I felt like I was really kind of like just making videos for the algorithm in that sense. So I wanted to move to YouTube to both like just expand my own opinions and also just make something that I think people wanted to see on YouTube as well. I think yeah. there was clearly there was an audience for it on TikTok. So I was hoping there would be an audience for it on YouTube as well. Yeah, yeah because it's also people watch TikTok everywhere and yeah. w watching YouTube usually happens on desktop or do you know? I think actually I saw some study. I think a few, like a, a high percentage is on your phone. A lot of people do just watch like, yeah. on their phone. I uh, I'm, I'm always watch guy. my phone. Yeah, I'm too old. Fair enough. <laughs> Already. The um, screen is too small for you. Is that it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I think so. Yeah. I just like crispy content. Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, so, so um, uh, yeah, also about YouTube, we, it's, it's good to maybe watch one. Sure. Um, and, and let's just start off with the first one because you continued with the satire sure, and yeah. comedy um, already in the first video and I think uh, it will show itself. You've seen the title, what's so good about Kiko Kostadinov? Like using your words, what's, what's good about him? Go, go ahead, answer. What was that? You said he's cool, he's unique. Did I hear he's awesome? Well, you've nailed it. There must be nothing else to this cool, unique, awesome designer and his designs. Except there is. But before I tell you, a quick recap on his career so far, so we're on the same page. He was born in Bulgaria and grew up with a humble background. His dad was a construction worker and his mom was a cleaner. So he's already got that going for him. At 16, he moved to London and ended up with a degree in IT. Yes, Kiko the IT support man. He must have got sick of that, so he applied to CSM and got rejected and he lived the rest of his life as an IT support man. Except he tried again two years later after doing some interning and getting some experience and got in. I wasn't sure how long to go for. <laughs> they, were, they will watch the rest at home, of course. Of course thank um, you. Or they will do in the video. <laughs> they will watch the video anyway. Um, uh, yeah, so this this already shows that it, 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 it still relates a bit to the TikTok in my yeah. view, but it's just longer, it feels. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess, well, this was my first one and I came from TikTok. That's what I kind of knew. Even though I had watched YouTube a lot, I just kind of migrated that format to this, which is why this is why it is how it is. But it changed quickly as it went yeah. on to like the more live stream format as you saw before. And the reason I ended up changing was because at the time I watched this um, skateboarding YouTuber when I was into skating, right? And his whole thing was that he was in the corner watching like a skate video and commenting on it. And it yeah. worked very well for him. So I was like, why not do the same? Yeah. <laughs> But this this one is without that. This one is out. This is before I kind of had that idea to make ah, something more for YouTube. This so video didn't perform as well, but it was my first one. Obviously, it's fine. Yeah. But as I switched over to what he was doing, and I saw the yeah. success on that. Yeah, yeah, that's also what I pointed at the introduction is that yeah. uh, it has very much of a, a Twitch stream effect, yeah, yeah, live yeah. streaming. Uh, so that was on purpose. Uh, I guess I saw that it worked for him, and that's yeah. kind of where I got it from. I didn't, I wasn't really thinking of the live stream aspect at the yeah. time, but I, I do see in retrospect some things. It just, yeah. they just lined up that way. That it does yeah. feel like that, I guess. Yeah, and it, and it also makes sense because, uh, not to, yeah, well, yeah. If you, if you think about it, watching a fashion show or just a skate video, it also uh, both have the same sort of like uh, mundanity to it, yeah. in a way, right? And you're watching it with someone that makes it just. More entertaining, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. kind of what I wanted to do. Oh, so you're like the the the, the parrot on or how do you exactly? Say yeah, yeah, like yeah. you're watching it, but then I'm also just like you know keeping you engaged, <laughs> yeah. you know, like adding that TikTok. Yeah. Just you can't like what like yeah yeah. And it's also that you 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 speak very fast. Yeah, I think that's just how I speak, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, that was. The I got a lot of comments saying I need to slow down, and I just <laughs> can't. You know? Yeah. And so I'm rolling. I'm just rolling. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> So with longer videos come also longer research. Yeah, uh, and we had a we have an example of uh, how you went through this process with one of your videos. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should just watch uh, 20, 30 seconds of sure. it. Sure. Um, and it was the truth of wow. being a fashion designer. Yeah. So you enjoy the art of fashion. You want to be a designer? Sorry, I meant 
creative director. That's the career buzzword that everyone's after these days. Well, unless you're an established celebrity with a hefty amount of influence, or you have a large Instagram following and have proved your ability to sell buckets of clothing and generate revenue, you're probably not going to be hired by one of the big boys. They no longer take risks. However, if you do satisfy either of those criteria, then now may be your time to enter the fashion game. Although Lindsay Lohan didn't work out for Ungaro and Ludovic de Saint-Sornon didn't really work for Anne de Mullemeister. Yeah, so um, uh, let's go to the to the early beginning the re of, the, of the video. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, okay. so sort of um, the the notes or the, oh, right, how I made the, the scripting yeah. and the, and the right. yeah. So I found out from being invited to speak here that I'm very unorganized <laughs> with how I make my videos. I never really thought about it before. So I think I took a very kind of like minimalist approach kind of thing. Not not on purpose. I think it was actually like a lazy approach, but I, it's minimalist if you want to call it that. <laughs> so. I, whenever I go into something, this is basically the script. This is what it looks like. It's written in this notepad. And as you see, it's not very um, aesthetically nice to look at. I don't use like Notion or any of these cool yeah, programs yeah. that people use because I feel like I've looked into it before and I often find that they're just very like, I'm not trying to maximize everything. Sometimes you just need to like do the work. That's all that's important. And yeah. just let me do that without any distractions. And like the way that I know how, how much like how much of how long a video will be. I have this fit to like a very specific width on my screen, as you see. And I can't like, <laughs> to go to the next line, I have to press enter. And as you see, there's no word count here. There's just a line count down here. So I know because it's at this specific width and that we're at uh, 121 lines, I know this is going to be like a 15, 16 minute video. And that's how I count, which is just crazy now that I have to say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I, I'd are. even put the, I put the thing to Microsoft Word and then get the word count here. So I know, I don't know why. <laughs> That was amazing. Yeah, but maybe the minimalistic approach yeah, is also pleasing so. in a way. Yeah, yeah. Because you you are able to make up your own system. That's true. And I find like these doing these little like things is it's kind of like it's like the mundane tasks are kind of nice because when it comes to making these videos, I found it to be very like mentally like just take a lot of mental power like Yeah. I never really liked doing like like simple kind of manual labor jobs. I was like, oh, I wish I was doing something more meaningful, I guess, right? Yeah. And this felt more meaningful in a way, but then I realized, wow, this takes a lot of like mental energy to come up with these opinions and thoughts and have to write this down and share it to, to people and like have to be judged by people online. It was, that was like, you know, mentally kind of, yeah. that's hard to deal with in, in some senses. So I don't know, doing these like little mundane tasks of like, you know, copying it over and like, that would, it was kind of like a, the yeah. I, I enjoy those parts. I don't know, like picking out the images, yeah. doing these little fun things. That was fun compared to like the, the hard like meat of writing yeah, yeah, the script. Yeah, if that makes I, get, sense. I think I get it because uh, when I uh, uh, find something that I can just do very easily with while listening to music, exactly, yeah, then I will tend to do that endlessly, even yeah. though I have so many tasks ahead of me because it's night. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's the word. Um, yeah, and so and and then so this text is it's quite long. Yeah. Um, so you don't do this from the top of your head. Well, what I would do is I would write out like just like this from the top of my head, oh. and I would just add to it, and then at the end, <laughs> I just read over it and over it and over it, and like refine it, and that's what I do. So this top here, oh. I have little comments here. These are like different titles. So one title was "Why It's So Hard to Make in Fashion," and it's "Why It's So Hard to Be a Successful Designer," "Why It's So Hard to Be an Independent Designer." You have to like, you really have to go over the little nuances of it because I guess I guess it matters. I'm not really sure. And yeah. those uh, that oh, the title, uh, yeah. if you go back, at the end it says like. Uh, Dash dash is yeah, it, yeah. Right? and then title is that a way of commenting also in the, in the yeah that, that's just how I comment so that I know what it is because yeah. as you see it's going to be very hard to differentiate between yeah. what's for the title and what's not you know I see so that's a bit that's uh, that's like coding yeah 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 it's my uh, little computer science background going yeah. in there yeah yeah. yeah 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 well we'll get into that later <laughs> in, in I have it a bit at the end here for yeah. the thumbnail and the articles like yeah. these are articles I would reference in the comments of the video and these are all these are just this is an idea for the thumbnail this big long line. Uh, so I just write down everything I thought in this file and then just go from there. Yeah. And for me, it's very organized in my head. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, in, in the end, it also sort of turns out to be very organized. But then, yeah. so this is the, the text and then you have the visual part. Sure. Um, then sometimes you, you were mentioning that you uh, use uh, just one fashion show. Yeah. Uh, but then you also have the Bernard Arnault uh, video, which mm -hmm. is the billionaire uh, owner of LVMH, yeah. which owns almost everything. Yeah. Um, and um, I was wondering, like, it, it, then from the top of your head, is it that you then, oh, sorry, the, the, the visual part of it. Yeah. Um, so do you go into archives or do you just go on YouTube well, and rip it there? Or like, how does that work? Yeah, so I guess for, um, for, for YouTube, I would just go and look up, like, YouTube, it would just be a video that I ripped off, uh, like, it was, 
depending on what I'm talking about, it might be a runway show just of what I thought was relevant and would be yeah. nice to watch. And if it's a Bernard Arnault video, I guess I try to make it more like documentary like and yeah. show like relevant uh, kind of videos. And uh, I would have like, for, on YouTube, I wouldn't really have much of an archive just because it's not as, the aesthetic isn't as important. A lot of people would listen to my videos and they would tell me this, they would listen to it as a, a podcast. So in the end, it's almost like it doesn't matter as much. It's more the actual content that matters and like what you're, I'm actually saying and what you're hearing is more important when it comes to YouTube relative to TikTok. On TikTok, yeah. as I said, I'd go on Pinterest because yeah, that's yeah, where all yeah, the yeah. videos are. Here I have like a little file I have just of resources. So I'll just load up in a second. Uh, these are like uh, some photos that I would like reuse or like sound effects I would reuse. There's a picture of Bernard Arnault there, some like little <laughs> meme images. This is stuff I would like reuse, but other yeah. than that, I wouldn't have an archive of anything that's like yeah. different. It's all very, I don't know. It's not, I didn't go really that like hard into crazy editing and all yeah. this stuff. And I think it worked. So I don't, didn't see a point to go really into like doing this very edited over the top stuff you know yes so and and then then that's maybe also what what connects at both your platforms and how you work with them is it's a very raw nonchalant type of approach mm -hmm. do you agree with that with that uh yeah idea? i guess so and i think people i guess that's kind of what people want because even on on youtube nowadays you watch a lot of videos which are just over edited and it has some like generic narrator on top and sometimes i think it's nice to just like see someone talking and like it's just like having a conversation like we are right now, yeah. you know, it's just, it's just nice to observe that and feel like you're yeah. involved, you know, and just yeah. to watch something casually. Like when you're watching a movie with your friend and you're just talking to them, watching, talking about the movie. It's yeah. like you're watching a runway show, just. Yeah, exactly. Just yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly. It's the, more cozying up to Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so then so I, I was just uh, to zoom out a little. Um, so you started off with um, posting once a day and now it's more about once a month uh -huh. on YouTube. Um, you, you also mentioned that you were on a little break. Yeah. Uh, can you explain a bit why? why sure. I think I got a bit. Um, I don't know. Maybe not overwhelmed. I guess it didn't turn out to be what I thought it was in the end. I guess I went into it, and as I saw, like my I guess follower count grow up, go up, and it was all very exciting. You know, when you go from a thousand followers to ten thousand, and then ten thousand twenty. Do uh, yeah, lots yeah. of dopamine, and it. I don't want to seem ungrateful or anything, but then that goes away very quick. Yeah. Like 20 to 30,000, that's not much of a difference. 30 to 40,000, even less, right? And it, it becomes just chasing these like bigger goals. And I felt the same ha thing happening to me on YouTube where, especially because I started to make like uh, money off my YouTube videos on TikTok, I never really did that because I didn't really do like sponsorship sponsorships or anything like this. I just, I didn't really like that, especially because I was doing videos about fashion, which is very consumeristic. I wanted to stay away from that in a sense. Yeah, I yeah. did dabble a little bit, but I tried not to. And, um, was I talking about again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, did you, you, did you, no, I'm also forgetting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh, shit. We're both blacking out. It's blanked completely there. <laughs> we'll just sit here. No. <laughs> oh, about why I ended up uh, yeah, yeah. leaving. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah, sure. yeah. Well, yeah. That, that was actually a, a nice segue to, to, uh, to also ask this question because uh, now you're, uh, at the beginning you were speaking of uh, maybe studying fashion when you started off the channel. Yeah. Uh, did have, making this content also uh, change the course of your sort of study. Definitely, definitely. I think, I guess I'm, I guess it, it, it What's your study now? Now I study computer science, right? <laughs> but uh, I did initially want to study fashion. And I think just by learning so much about it and learning all this about the industry, I realized how, I guess, toxic it is and that the final like path, like where I would want to have been, which is like having my own brand, working with people I like. Yeah. It's, that is so far away. Like in order to get yeah. there, the path, the journey to get there, like going through fashion school, working, doing internships and all this, it just, it doesn't seem worth it in the end. The destination I think I would love, but yeah. actually getting there, if I'm not in love with that, then I don't think that that's what I want to do. And so yeah. I don't, I haven't completely given up on that, but I think I've just found other means to get there in a way. Like especially doing computer science, this is something that I actually enjoy doing. I wouldn't say I'm super passionate about it, but yeah. I, I'm good at it. And in the end, I could use that to fund what I want in fashion. Yeah. And I can work in fashion in different ways without having to go through this toxic workplace yeah. that I hear so much. Like I've talked to so many people and I've met so many people in Antwerp who like- Also tell me because, of your, uh, because of your channel. Because of my channel or just people that I happen to be in fashion that yeah. I, I met. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, um, yeah, the, the, the computer science is then also maybe a way to uh, sort of distract from the things that you actually like to do. Yeah. And, that's also, and it also makes sense because at the, uh, in your latest videos, you sort of uh, have way more sort of DIY and 
Yeah, uh, I was like experimenting, trying to do stuff that I enjoyed more. But I think I wanted to take a break and just find what I wanted to do before I go back to YouTube. I yeah. think I do want to go back for sure because it's a, it is really cool. And I still feel the need to want to express myself and my opinions. Yeah. But as long as you're having fun, as long it. as I'm having fun, I'm not pressured into like conforming to what the algorithm wants and what I think the algorithm wants or a system. Exactly, like l looking at views, trying to like depending on it for income is also not a great way to do something genuinely, yeah. I guess. So yeah. I want to distance myself from all that and just go back to it if I want to, you know, in the end of the day. And that's kind of what I'm just waiting to happen now until eventually I feel an urge and I'm feeling more of an urge and urge to create stuff there again. Well, for great. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sounds really cool. And uh, we'll look forward to your uh, new endeavors. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, well, then uh, now it's uh, time to open up for the audience uh, for questions. How much time do I have left? Because I'm about 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, if there are any questions, of course. No pressure. There's already one up upstairs. Yes. I was worried there's going to be no questions. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. I wanted to ask you, uh, do you feel like there's a different um, reception from like the viewers from TikTok that from YouTube? Like, uh -huh. do you feel like it changes a lot? Because I personally feel like when I go to comments in YouTube and TikTok, they're very different when it comes to things like fashion. Yeah, I fully agree with it. Uh, with TikTok, uh, I, I think my best videos on TikTok, the comments are all negative. Like. It's like the, the ones that do the best are the ones that are the most controversial. But on YouTube, it really felt like I kind of like garnered a bit of a, like a fan base of people actually sharing ideas and like talking about the video more. And I, I really, I really like that part about it, honestly. And the, that's what also kept me back to wanting to make YouTube videos over TikToks as well, because there was like a bit of a community that formed in the comments. And it was really nice to see that on TikTok. It's, it's, it's kind of random, like not even the same people. I, I couldn't recognize names on TikTok. On YouTube, I, I definitely could. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for the question. Well, I've, I've, I've had many friends in my life that were into fashion. For um, They actually went to, to university to study. it. Um, I've never felt like very attached to it um, physically or, or, or even um, enjoying uh, uh, to understand uh -huh. the aesthetic. My question is, um, when did you realize in your life that you're into it, that that was something that um, not just work as a hobby, but it's something you want to pursue? Um, I think I was always kind of into it since I was very young. Like, kind of, I don't know, it's weird, because I think uh, I went to an all-boys school, and I think it was... it was hard for me to want to express myself in that way. I always felt the need to, and even by wearing very simple things when we had, like, days where we didn't have to wear our uniform, I would get comments and stuff like that, which was like really crazy to think that like I was wearing very simple stuff, but like to other people, to other like my classmates, it was like kind of weird in a way. So I was always kind of into it, but I felt, I guess, maybe a bit repressed in a way, going to all boys school maybe. And it, I guess it was during pandemic when I was just by myself, experimenting, figuring out what I want to do, what I want to like. That's kind of how I stumbled onto really like getting into it and making my own clothes and doing all that stuff. So yeah, I think that was a really nice time for that. Yeah. Otherwise, maybe I never would have like actually gone into it and experimented and tried. You know what I mean? Hello. Hello. I'm curious. Where did your uh, content or like your um, the thing that you're doing online brought you? Like, for example, now you're here doing mm -hmm. this talk. Have you been like published on any other platforms outside of TikTok and YouTube, or been recognized by any media? Um, I've done. Uh, I think it's mostly in like kind of like the social media sphere. I've done uh, podcasts with other. Stuff like that. I did get mentioned in a Vogue article, which was quite funny because the guy who wrote about and who I was mentioned, I made fun of him in one of my videos, but I don't think he realized. <laughs> so I was I was in there, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. another YouTuber, I'm not sure if you know Fashion Roadman. He's a fashion YouTuber as well. He talked about me on on Vogue, and yeah, that's how I got there. But um, other than that, I don't know. I don't think I I got any much recognition from the mainstream fashion media sources. I think also because I really like I don't really like them, and I talked. A lot of bad stuff about them. So even if someone was to notice, maybe they would be like, no, I, like, yeah, clearly this guy is not interested. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm interested because in the beginning you were mentioning the difference between male and female um, fashion and that there is a limited option for men. Um, looking at, like, history of fashion, why do you think that right now there is such a limited capacity for the expression of men? Oh, well, I made a video about this, so actually, <laughs> maybe I know a little something. Uh, yeah, um, 
obviously there's I, I don't think there's like a concrete reason you can pinpoint, but like my speculation, I guess, is just the the culture surrounding men. And I think it originated from the the nobility back in the time, the like the royalty. That's where fashion always kind of comes from. Like it's usually the lower class copying the upper class, and the upper class decides what's popular. And one thing that a lot of people like pinpoint as like why maybe men are like this in today's society and why we like are limited in our dress is because of certain there's this one guy called Bo Brummel who was like a lower class person who wanted to be with upper class people and he ended up really influencing how the royalty dressed because he dressed like a dandy that's where the term dandy came from was this guy who was in England dabbling in with the royal family and from there he was quite a bully and it spread his influence around and like I don't think it's fair to necessarily extrapolate him to all of why men's fashion is how it is, but I think reasons like that, this kind of toxicness in masculinity is maybe why there's uh, limited factors, because, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I think, anyway. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Yeah, um, thanks for exploring the, your practice with us. Um, I had a question about uh, why you chose to do things on TikTok. Um, in relation to kind of like more traditional forms of fashion critique, which is, I don't know, uh, magazines or mm -hmm. publications. Um, what do you think um, maybe the benefits or also, and also maybe the pitfalls in comparison to these more kind of traditional forms? Yeah, well, I think I was interested in this like highbrow fashion, I guess, but I didn't really see it like represented much on for like I guess younger people and it is on uh, social media if you know where to look and on TikTok but the videos just aren't that like I guess they're not really created for the algorithm as much it's just people kind of talking to a camera which is what TikTok is all about in a way so I wanted to make what I'm interested in which was like uh, high fashion more catchy for a general audience to also help them like think more about how they thought about fashion because it's just I didn't see it much that was a niche that I kind of was trying to fill and I think that there are it, it definitely limits you in terms of like how much you can talk about because as I said, a lot of my comments would be negative. Not that I really cared, but I know a lot of them would be also positive as well. And it's because like regular people would be uh, confronted with like this crazy fashion that they're not used to. And I think in general, it's just a net good thing just for more people to be confronted with it and have it be more normalized by doing that. So that was kind of my goal was to spread, spread how, what I thought of fashion and not even to spread what I thought, but just to spread like fashion in general as a form of expression. That's, valid for like especially for guys which is just like it's not really like looked at like that as much so yeah i hope that answered your question i kind of got lost in there <laughs> yeah well thank you that answers all the questions i had and the audience also had so uh, thank you so much michael it's very interesting thank you it's thank really you. nice to to talk about it yeah it's cool. interesting to look back yeah nice well Michael, everyone. Thank you.